All right, guys, take it 40 Kevin here in the gamer heaven. I usually don't do this kind of thing, but I guess I'm going to vlog a little bit real quick or video log or vlog as the kids say. As you can see, I have the room completely torn up. I am absolutely completely redoing this room. I just, it's like Barack Obama said, it's time for a change, honestly. So besides hacking down those trees, which took me about three hours or so, I had to uh, use my electronic hedge trimmer to uh, cut down all the bushes and whatnot. Then I used a shovel to basically dig out the roots. Then I used a hacksaw to cut some of the thicker roots. So that was primarily for a couple of reasons. One, it's right up against my house, which can cause termite issues. Two, they were basically blocking this entire window so no natural sunlight could get in. Also, when it got very windy, which happens all the time because it storms here constantly, those branches would scrape up against the window making this god-awful squeak, which would absolutely ruin my recordings. Uh, and also my HOA, or Homeowners Association, which by the way, I never ever, ever recommend that any of you guys get a house with a HOA. I, this is my second house now that I've owned with a Homeowners Association and they're just so deep up in your colon. Um, they don't use any lube either. They're just like, oh, nice chocolate starfish. Let me in there for a minute. It's pretty bad. But anyway, uh, they wrote me a letter, not a fine or anything, just a little, can you please uh, trim your hedges? They look a little bit overgrown. Like I'm in Jumanji over here. I've got a freaking jungle in my house or something. It's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, so that's another reason is I just didn't want to hear my hoa yip yapping and jaw jacking. And now we're doing a full on wire tuck. So I did a video about a month ago, my cable management slash wire tuck job. I'm already changing it up because I did not like it. So I was using these things right here. However, they kept falling off. The adhesive on them is really shitty. They don't hide the wires completely. And it, it it's really hard to stuff a ton of wires in these things. And then also you could actually see them poking up a little bit from the top of the desk. And it just, it didn't look very clean to me. And I want this setup to look absolutely spectacular. I want this to be, you know, a full on YouTube room, game room kind of thing. So anyway, uh, I'm running these bad boys up underneath the desk. So I put on this really good 3M uh, adhesive here. This is like the stuff that holds on like body kits, like spoilers and stuff like that. So you know, it's, it's good. So anyway, that is going to be up underneath here like that. And that is going to run all the way down the entirety of the desk. I also disassembled and sold that table that used to be right there holding all of my like, you know, decorations, my stuffed animals, hats. Hats are now up there as you can see. And then we're gonna be wall mounting a TV right here, which is gonna be used as a third monitor um, to where I can put up like YouTube videos or Netflix or whatever I want up there. When I sit here and record a vlog, I can have whatever topic or subject I'm talking about, have a picture of it right there behind me. So that's gonna be really nice. Um, I'm not buying a new TV. I'm just using one that I've had sitting around unused for a while. I believe it's a 40 inch. It's a Sony I've had for about eight years now. I don't know how it still runs, but it does. We're gonna be measuring the room to make sure we wall mount it absolutely dead center, dead center in the room. And then I ordered a second desk, which is gonna go right there. So this desk is obviously really far from the wall right now, but this is gonna be pushed all the way up in that corner. This is an L-shaped desk. Then the same company, Monarch Specialties, it's the same uh, colorway or same theme pattern. It's white and cement. And it's just a 60 inch straight desk. So that's gonna go there. So it's basically gonna be like one super long L. It's gonna take up that entire wall there. Um, and I need that because I'm getting a, I'm building a second PC, a budget build on here. Um, a, more on that later. So yeah, wall mounted TV, building a new desk, sold that thing, wall mounted the hats, uh, redid this whole wall here. As you see, there's now my retro controllers up on the wall there. Uh, I'm probably gonna be wall mounting that Viotech uh, for a couple reasons. I want it to be able to swivel. So if I'm at a different angle, I can swivel it to me. Two, I want it up higher towards my eye level as where if it's on the stand, it's about three inches off of the center of my eye line, which for gaming is an ideal. You want it absolutely dead center to you. So I'm doing that. Uh, probably gonna raise that monitor up a couple inches. Uh, might be painting the walls. Uh, I mean, this is a full blown, like full on renovation of this room, guys. All right, that's the TV I'm gonna be wall mounting. It is a Sony KDL-40R. I don't even know if they make this model anymore. Like I said, it's like six or seven years old. I don't even think it's 4K, I think it's 1080p, but that is not a huge deal as I'm not gonna be doing any gaming on this or anything crazy like that. This is literally going to be to display images and videos behind me while I'm doing my videos. 
and also just to have a full-size screen if I'm working in here and I want to be able to throw up Netflix or something like that is considered a mid-size TV, which back in the day, if you look like even eight to 10 years ago, that would be considered a really big TV. But unless you have like a 65 or a 75 inch now, you're behind the Joneses. But anyway, um, I'm going pretty budget with a lot of this stuff. I will have linked in the description below absolutely everything I'm using as I am trying to do as much of this stuff on the cheap as I can. I'm obviously not skimping out or cheaping out on things that are really gonna matter, but you know, something like using a name brand wall mount versus using a generic one that is made out of the same materials, has the same weight capacity, stuff like that. There's really no purpose for me not to um, take the budget route with that. Um, obviously that's money that I can reallocate and spend on things like a new graphics card eventually when those come back in stock. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a lot of work. And that's another thing I could hire somebody, to, uh, an electrician to come here and route wires and stuff like that. I could even hire somebody to do, you know, a lot of this stuff in here, wall mounting my monitors, painting my walls, stuff like that. But I'm doing all this myself for two reasons. One, to save money. And two, I kind of enjoy doing DIY projects. It keeps my mind off of, you know, shit in my life and whatnot. So, all right, for being like a $13 generic wall mount kit, you pippy, pippy shell. <laughs> uh, this actually is uh, boxed incredibly well. It has pretty good instruction manual, not color or anything like that, but good font. English is the primary language, very informative. Shows you two different mounting methods. One for if you're using studs or two, if you're not, you're just going through drywall and you're going to use the anchor method by using these uh, wall anchors here. It does, of course, include all the different hardware for different uh, different TV models. So if you have LG, Sony, Vizio, whatever, it's gonna have a, a hardware solution for the back of your TV. And then, of course, it has different braces, so you can put it into like an X shape or an H shape, depending on how it's gonna line up with the um, wall mounting holes in the back of your TV. The mount itself actually feels incredibly durable. It is a full swivel mount, which I really do like these ones. Um, I have one in my bedroom and that second monitor on the wall, which you can't see over there is also like this. But yeah, these are these are great. It gives you a full swivel ability, also up and down with the monitor. Feels very durable. I have no doubt that this is gonna be able to hold my 18 pound TV. You also have an up arrow showing you which way uh, obviously is supposed to be up towards the ceiling. And uh, yeah, enough said about that. And you have your actual mounting bracket right here. Pippy, pippy shell. All right, so the mount is on the back of the Sony TV here. I had to use one long spacer on the bottom here and a long and a medium spacer on the top because I guess these two top um, ports or threaded slots for the mounts are actually uh, shorter, more shallow, and you don't want to drill in too far because you could actually crack your LCD screen or go too far and mess up the um, printed circuit board in there or whatever. So definitely don't want to... Uh, do that but you don't want screws that are too short either because they're not going to give full support for the weight of your tv and this is an older tv so it's a little bit heavier than a lot of the uh, modern tvs that you're going to find out there uh, and i also marked the wall already with a with a uh, pencil dead center uh, not only height wise but also horizontally as well so vertically and horizontally i want the tv basically spaced uh centered in this wall here and this is a pretty good size room this is the second largest room in my house uh, that's why i selected this for my my creativity space, my, you know, for schoolwork and work work for my side businesses and for YouTube and for me just to relax and hang out and play video games in. My happy, happy spot, my my safe space. Yes, baby, yes! So that's a fucking V for Vendetta, V for Victory, V for Vag, whatever you boys wanna say. I was really hoping that there was gonna be a stud right where I marked that thing, because that is dead center in the room. So whoever designed this house, I don't even know who the builder is for this house. It's not DR Horton, because that was my last house. Uh, I don't know, it's a 2010. I guess I'd have to look up the zoning in this area, in the subdivision, and see who built this bad boy. But good job, guys. Uh, a stud dead center in the room there. Oh man, uh, they, I love when things fall together like that, because a lot of times they don't. And then you have to find workarounds like, okay, well, is it going to be offset to the right or left a few inches? Are people going to notice that in videos that the TV's not centered? I'm sure as hell going to notice it because it's my room and I'm the one that put it up. So I know it's not centered. There we go. That's one knife. Seems really small for a pilot hole, but whatever. Who am I to judge? All right, so for securing the lag bolts to the wall, you are gonna use some washers. Uh, I have my ratchet set here. Again, this will be linked in the description below. I do choose everything that is 
going to work. It's not going to snap in your hand or anything like that, but it's, you know, maybe a cheaper version or whatever. Because again, you know, paying for something name brand versus a kind of a off, an off brand uh, generic version that still does the exact same thing. It's made with the same materials, has the same warranty and everything. I just don't see a reason to spend more money on something. Yeah, that's that's the play right there. It's a 10 mil, boys. All right, boys, she's up there. She seems pretty level and everything. And also, if it's not exactly level, that you can uh, swivel the TV so I can just mess with that later. But uh, it's not falling off the wall. Eventually, I will be drilling a uh, one and a half to two inch hole into the wall behind the television to drop back the HDMI cable and the power cable and then drill out there at the floorboard down there by the, by the trim. And that way, obviously, it'll look like there's absolutely zero wires because they're going to be, well, inside behind the actual drywall. Now, hopefully, this cable is long enough for that. This is not a modular cable, i.e. you can't un plug this it's actually you know soldered into the tv itself it's it's hardwired in there it's not like uh, a um, um, modular where you can just unplug it and use you know a shorter or longer cable depending on your needs uh, which i think most modern tvs are using that um that model but you know again this is an older tv so they they really didn't uh do things like that yet but i do like this this mount a lot you can swivel it you can angle it you can pull it out if you want like like this which is pretty sweet i mean you can pull it out even farther if you want you could have that thing about two feet off the wall if you um if it tickled your fancy or whatever but yeah i'm just gonna push it as far against the wall flush as i can and you know it's really cool that i can you can swivel it around and whatnot i like it i like it a lot boys I really do like it too because I've had this TV for like eight years. I don't want to chuck it out because it still works and I didn't want to go out and spend, you know, two, three hundred dollars on a, another 40 inch 4K TV. You know, it doesn't need to have a high refresh rate or best in class uh, lighting or Dolby Atmos or anything like that. All right, fellas, so I measured and marked uh, four pieces here that are going to need to be cut in order to fit underneath the desk as there are some metal brackets and whatnot under there that obviously are gonna to need to be cut out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Dremel tool here. Make sure you guys are wearing eye protection, optional gloves if you don't wanna cut your fingers or anything. All right, now I'm gonna hand sand down these cut edges with uh, some 80 grit coarse and then follow it up with some very fine, uh, just to make sure everything's smooth, even though this probably will never be seen. It's underneath my desk, but still I'm trying to get this set up just just nice as shit, just underneath the desk, even the places where you're not gonna see, I want to be pristine. All right guys, we're gonna crawl underneath here real quick, lay on our backs, just like we're getting underneath a car to work on or something. All right, sweet. So like I told you guys, you know how I cut them, it was to, you know, obviously to stick up under here where the brackets are and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this runs all the way down. It's gonna be a little, a little pass through on the side there. And yeah, this cable management's gonna be looking real good, boys. Real, real good. I'm gonna get back down there and start routing these wires. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do to tie everything together. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish up with episode one of this build. All right, gents, I've been running all these wires or cables and the cableways underneath there. And as you can see, none of these wires are crisscrossed over each other or anything like that. I have everything separated and that includes underneath the desk as well. So if I ever need to swap out a peripheral, I get a new webcam new keyboard to review or something like that. It should be very easy just to tug on the cable and have it come out without having all the wires spill out of the cable tray underneath there. It's very painstaking. This is taking quite a bit of time. That's not the real time because right now I'm not connected to internet. So yeah, but anyway, uh, I've been at this for a while, but I mean, you know, things are looking pretty good in here. I got the TV wall mounted, the cableways cut and installed on the bottom there. I'm gonna do something even a little bit better, but I routed all these to the right of this post here instead of having like two on the left, two on the right, one down the middle. I have all of them coming off to the right here. Probably gonna tie them up with this braid here so it's just one thick white cable instead of a bunch of loose ones. And uh, this is gonna look pretty good. This is this is gonna be worth it. Um, the Stream Deck is not gonna go there. I am gonna be wall mounting the Viotech and the Stream Deck is gonna be dead center right below the monitor. <laughs> this makes me smile um my noodle so yeah that that is uh temporary for now having the stream deck right there eventually it's going to be dead center underneath the monitor when that is uh wall mounted which will make it flush with the bottom of the secondary monitor that's going to be probably in part two um and then we're probably also going to have a part three and potentially a part four because like i said this room is going to be 
it's going to be decked the F out. Now, before I put Trooper 7 back in its rifle home over there, I am going to Windex the inside and out of the plexiglass cover. I'm also going to take off this magnetized dust cover and clean it off. Doesn't look too, too bad, to be honest, but yeah. We'll take care of that. I'm also gonna blow out these, uh, this front vent right here, put her back. So anytime you actually have your tower out for any reason, as you usually probably don't move around your tower and take it out once it's set, it's in place. But when you are, whenever you are doing something like this, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and just clean out your PC. I'll probably also take an air duster can, a compressed air can, and just blow out the inside of the tower as well. All right, boys, so coming behind the monitor here, as you see, I have everything braided. I even have the uh, webcam run through itself, and then it links up uh, about halfway down the monitor into the sleeve. So when you look at it from the front, you just see the white sleeve there. But keep in mind, this is just temporary. This is going to get wall mounted, so that'll be literally flush up against the bottom of the monitor. And then down here, you also have uh, all the wires, vice these two really large ones for the keyboard and the power cable for the monitor ran into that braid there. All right, boys, so we're all set up as you see right now. It automatically uh, Windows detected what format the monitors were in. So that is pretty cool. It knows that I have these two monitors vertical over here and then this was off to the right. I didn't have to adjust any of that, which is pretty cool. Obviously these wires, that's not, that's not gonna stay like that at all. So what we're gonna do, Let's go ahead and drill into the drywall here and run these wires down the back. Alrighty guys, you see I got the pajamas on now. It's been a heck of a long day, about three hours out front, digging out those trees, about another three hours in here, working on the cable management, wall mounting that TV, as well as just tidying everything up. And uh, you know, a lot of people might say doing these DIY projects, you should be wearing some denim jeans, a nice car hard jacket, maybe some steel toed boots. I disagree, you wanna be going for maximum comfort. So if you can wear a onesie or some kind of loose fitting clothing that'll get caught up in your power tools, that's what you really want. No, but seriously guys, uh, I think we did pretty good. I think we did pretty good today. I just tucked the wires up uh, behind the TV for now. It's not hooked up or anything like that. I ordered a drywall wire tuck kit from Amazon. It's actually code compliant because anytime you're drilling into your drywall and moving around the fiberglass insulation in there, um, you wanna make sure that whatever wires you're putting in the drywall are actually rated for in-wall performance. They have to have a different type of insulation and whatnot, as they are not gonna have like the same in-your-house weather protection and stuff like that. And they're also gonna be around like kind of sharp fiberglass insulation and whatnot. So I uh, ordered that, that'll be here in a couple days. I ordered the wall mount for the monitor. I ordered some uh, underglow for the desk. Obviously the second desk, it's gonna be right there. Uh, is going to be here in about three or four days. Overall, though, cable management looks really good. We got the TV up. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the direction this room is heading. It's going to be able to optimize my workflow when I'm making YouTube videos. Instead of me having to spend several minutes setting up lights and setting up cameras, I'm going to have uh, webcams mounted in different uh, spots around the room with wires ran in through the wall to the PC. So I basically, if I want to make a YouTube video, I just go to my stream deck over here, press a button, all of my uh, lighting turns on, my cameras are all ready for me to select which ones I want and I can go from there. It's gonna be a huge time saver. That way I can actually spend more time editing videos, coming up with good content ideas. Instead of worrying about frivolous stuff like setting up lights and camera angles, I can just have that all done for me. Um, you know, try and get some smart home integration in here and whatnot, just to make my life a lot easier, which in turn will be better for you guys because I can actually pump out more quality content Quantit? Some more quality content as well as quantity as well, because I'll have more of a workflow going on here. That's the whole purpose of this room is to be a, a think tank, a uh, you know creativity space where I can shoot YouTube videos, I can stream, and I can also just chill and relax after a hard day's work, kick back. I don't drink anymore, but you know have a have an O'Doul's or something, have a soda pop. I don't know, and just you know chill out in here and enjoy my setup that I worked really hard to build. So. Yeah, uh, I, this is going to be a playlist, guys. I am going to be having several episodes of the build for this room. And anything that goes into this room, tool-wise, I will have linked in the description below so you guys can follow this exact process. I'm just an average dude with an average day job. So if I can do this kind of stuff, having very minimal, you know, home improvement DIY knowledge and whatnot, anything I don't know how to do, I just go to YouTube University and look up like, oh, how to run wires in the wall, how to wall mount a TV, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's right there for you. So um, that's going to do it. This is episode one in the bag, guys. I think this room looks pretty damn good so far. Hold on. we got to pose for the thumbnail real quick. We'll get a couple, couple ones.
yeah, one of those will be good. I'll right, see you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you want to catch more in the playlist of building this room, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.